Alright, good Monday morning, the eve of 4th of July. So, we're out here on this call now. We have no cooling. I don't think the system's doing anything. I haven't found the air handler yet. First observation, we have a ton of oil right here. So, let's take a look. Alright, even though we have a ton of oil out here, we do not have a call. So if we go between here and here, we should have 24 volts and we do not. Let's just check real quick to make sure we have high voltage. We do have high voltage. Okay, so our problem is elsewhere. We will visit this oil issue in a few minutes. Possibly what's happening is the unit's low on charge and it froze up. Um, leaked into the emergency pan and kicked a pan switch or something but let's let's like see. somebody hit this unit at one point wow that's pretty impressive they crumpled they crumpled the the coil guard but did not damage the coil at all maybe a little tiny bit but that's pretty impressive so the coil guard did its job all right, so I just read a little bit of history on this unit. Um, we were out here a few weeks ago and the drain had clogged. Another technician came out, drain had clogged, he cleared the drain and then um, dried up the wet switch. So we do have a wet switch in there. So let's go inside and take a look at that. Uh, yep. Our pan switch is tripped. And we got some pretty significant water in here. So we might have a bigger issue than just a clogged drain. All right, I pulled the panel. You can see this might be because I have the panel off, but I don't think so. We're only freezing a couple, a couple tubes here. I'm thinking we're low on refrigerant. I'm gonna dump a gallon of water down there. In the, in the drain pan and see if it leaks out and takes it away so we can rule out a cracked drain pan. Yeah, well I've dumped about a half gallon of water in there so far and I'm not seeing anything leaking and we're still only freezing a couple coils here. She's gonna leak, she's gonna leak now. But it's not. Certainly taking the water away. Alright, let me get the leak detector out and see about all this right here. See the bulking valves are leaking. Alright, I'm getting hits over here. Surprisingly, I wasn't getting anything on these. So I'm thinking it's leaking at the base of the coil and I'm blowing it out here. So let's pull this. We're gonna pop the top, see if we can pinpoint it. All right, for some reason, I'm not getting any hits now that I've got the cover off, but I can see oil there. 
and oil all over the place. It's gotta be leaking somewhere. I also need a new sensor in my leak detector. That I've been procrastinating on for some reason because they're only 60 bucks. tons of oil here so it's got to be leaking somewhere from here well I was just getting some pretty significant hits on the on the service valves so I soaked them up not getting a whole lot of bubbles now but I just think that that coil is leaking I just can't get a good hit on it all right, I just started it up to see how low we actually are. So let's let this stabilize. We're gonna be pretty low though. Yeah, no subcooling and 66 degrees of super heat. Yeah guys, after digging deeper into that one, we do have a leaky condenser coil. And the problem is I can't get that coil until August. So, probably going to go ahead and replace the outdoor unit on it because not only can I not get it to August, it is very expensive too. I don't know, man. Carrier and Brian make their own prices. You know, we are a carrier factory authorized dealer, but man, their stuff is expensive. So, um, I think they're going to opt to get um, to get a new outdoor unit there. So. I'd rather do that anyway. I can I can slap an outdoor unit in there faster, and I can I can uh, change a whole coil out. So that's what we're gonna do there. But all right, guys, let's go check out this next. One. All right, we got the unit here running, but not running very well. Seems like low refrigerant right off the bat. But compressor does not sound very healthy. Take a look. We have a really low suction pressure. I think, uh, I think the coil might be froze up some too. It's not frozen out here. I'm gonna take a peek at that coil upstairs and see see what it's doing. The coil isn't frozen, but all of the distribution tubes coming off the TXV are I have a feeling we have a we have a clogged TXV here but I'm gonna get I'm gonna shift it into heat up for a little bit get all that ice off of there um, and shift it back sometimes that frees up whatever's in there too sometimes it happens like once in a blue moon but it has happened. Uh, well, I shifted it into heat for a minute and then back into air conditioning. And I have improvement anyway. My suction line is really hot from there. The head pressure went really high. You see my suction line temperature is crazy. I know I got a problem with that TXV up there. I just want to try to free it up we're July 3rd here. I want to get them through at least the holiday before we can get back out here. Yeah, I've tried a few different things with it. It just keeps getting worse. I tried adding refrigerant, tried shifting it back and forth from heat to cool, uh, pumped it down, shot nitrogen through it. Nothing's working. So... We got a bad TXV, it's stuck. Yeah, so we got a bad TXV there, which is a bummer. But what are you gonna do? System's from 2016, I believe, so it's seven years old now. Uh, it is still under warranty, the extended warranty. It was registered, we installed that system. I can't believe it's been seven years ago since we put that system in, but, um, but it has been, so. We'll get her a TXV for it and go back. It sucks, it, you know, it's right near a holiday because, um, you know, we're off tomorrow. So the soonest I can do that is Wednesday. So, but, 
All right, guys, well, I got one more to do today, and I'm getting an early day today because of the holiday. And uh, it's a freeze up, so take a look. Well, this is currently what I'm working with. I hate to say I'll see you later, but <laughs> I might have to see you later. I sent it in the heat. See if I can thaw it out quick, and it's definitely gone out. <laughs> Knock some of the ice off of here. We'll see if it'll thaw out quick, I'll stay, but if it can't thaw out quick, then I have to come back. That bottom coil's frozen pretty badly, so I don't know. I've already started this. I might as well wait it out. You know, sometimes freeze ups. You know, if as long as it's a heat pump, you can thaw it out pretty quick. Shift it all into heat. But what you want to make sure is that it's not going to leak everywhere. So I went up in the I went up in the attic. Uh, looked at the air handler as it was thawing out, making sure it's not spewing water everywhere. Make sure it's got an emergency pan underneath of it. Um, because once you send it into heat and it's froze up, it's going to thaw out and it's going to thaw out quick. And it's going to make a ton of water. So you just want to make sure while all that water's coming out of it, it's, um, it's going where it's supposed to. And if it's not, then at least it's getting caught by the emergency pan. Um, had this not had an emergency pan or it was a funky setup and the water started spewing everywhere, I wouldn't have done this. I would have let it thaw out gradually and I would have came back. But looks like it was, um, looks like it's a pretty good pan up there. Um, pretty good. And it's got a primary and a secondary drain coming off of the air handler. So this one's draining pretty good. I'll give it a few more minutes. I did shut it off, let that coil cool down some. I don't want to make them too hot in there. They already got no AC. No sense in running them out of there with heat, too. But I will start it up here in another minute. Let the heat run for a little while longer. Check back on that coil, see how much it's thawed out. It's the Ream. Um, and actually, this one might be an M style coil or a W, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I, I can't really get in there to pull chunks of ice out. So we got to let this thing just thaw out. Systems from 2003 or 22. So if it's low on refrigerant, well, she's got an issue. <laughs> I'll let it thaw out, we'll see. The, the filter looked dirty, but it wasn't horrible. And a lot of times, whenever you got just half the coil froze up, usually means low refrigerant. We'll see what we can do for her. Seems like a pretty big unit. Maybe it's a higher efficiency unit from 2003. 49, is this a four ton unit? If it is, it's grossly oversized for this house. This house might be 800 square feet. It's a little tiny house. I think this is four tons. I can't really see a number off the compressor. I'm not really up on Reams numbers, but I know an 048 is four tons. Help me out, guys. Is this a four-ton unit? Yeah, I just looked it up. This is a four-ton system. And it is grossly oversized for this house. I mean, look. That's the end of the house. That's the end of the house. Single story. Very small house. So I just measured outside dimensions on the house. And it's about a 700-square-foot house. So, <laughs> and we've got a four ton unit in this thing. 
It's a 2003, so unless somebody installed this thing used, it's always been like this, which is crazy to me. Absolutely crazy. This thing has had a four ton unit in it since 2003. I think I got the coil thawed out for the most part. So we're gonna go ahead and gauge up and, uh, and see what this thing's doing. All right, here's what we got. That's a pretty high head pressure for R22. But it is warm in the house and it's warm out here. It doesn't look low on refrigerant. That sub cooling is very high. Yeah, definitely a weird, weird why it froze up. It probably froze up because it's so oversized. The ductwork looked okay, but man, this thing is uh, this thing's way oversized. All right, I did wash that coil. I got that head pressure down a little bit. Um, but this unit isn't really worth putting a whole lot of time and effort and money into. 20 years old, uh, two and a half tons oversized, uh, two tons at the minimum. We are gonna do a load calc on it to see exactly what it needs. But um, I mean, it's, it, can't be, it can't need any more than, than two tons. Ton and a half, two tons, something like that. I did an amp draw on that unit. It's pulling 20 amps. The compressor is pulling 20 amps and it's it's in line it's uh it's rated amps is 27. this thing is using way more energy than that thing than that house needs so we're gonna get that out of there we're gonna put uh we're gonna put a ton and a half or two ton in there and uh, make that thing more energy efficient and even if the thing was running perfectly it probably only had like five minute run times because it's so big crazy man whoever put that system in should not be installing hvac systems i don't know if they were given the unit or if they were um the unit was installed used i'm, I'm not sure what the deal is but um it's definitely a weird funky situation there but so we're gonna get them a new unit in there but all right guys that's gonna be it for this one uh, i got a short day today i finished up around 1 30 and um yeah i'm on my way home so Hopefully everybody has a good 4th of July, and I'll catch you guys on Wednesday.